Good morning, everyone. In this class, I will solve with you six examples or problem, and I hope these examples will help you to understand uh, the chap this chapter, right? Chapter four. Okay. First e example on Pernal equation. It's a direct application on Pernal equation. We have water bottle here the height of this water bottle is 1.5 feet or foot and we have a cup to be filled and it's uh, seated beneath the table of two meter uh, two feet or two foot height right so what we're gonna do we need to calculate how much time the time needed to fill this cup in two cases first case when the bottle when this bottle is almost filled with water the second case when the water is almost the bottle is almost empty so what we're gonna do guys here it's very direct application we're gonna assume two cases case one and case two so for the first case delta z will be 1.5 plus 2 foot right or feet the, so the 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 rate of flow will be higher than when it's empty because delta z only will be two in the second case let's see how we're gonna solve this example together you see guys we just direct apply the Pernod equation as i told you in this case we have um so if we look at the figure here you will see that p is atmospheric pressure in the both cases so p1 is gonna equal p2 right nice v1 will be almost zero there is no velocity as i told you when we have a flow when the water is flowing out from big water body it throws a small pipe or a nose or a, sorry or a hose whatever so we can say the water velocity at the at the water body is gonna be zero so and we're gonna assume z to be zero at the lower level here you see so very simple here z gonna equal v square v2 square over 2g so we can calculate v so this is how we're gonna solve this equation so we have two cases so the first case velocity will be 15 uh feet over second so because we need how we gonna calculate the time we need to know the flow and the time is gonna equal the volume of this cup over the flow so what is the flow here in this case guys we have velocity we have area we know that the flow is gonna equal area times velocity so we can i can get it here so time for the first case is gonna be 1.6 second in the second case, the only difference here is this 3.5 become 2 because the water will be in this side here. It's almost empty. So we can get the time which, it, which, which is must be bigger than the first case. All right, this is very important. So that's how we can deal with such examples. So this, the answer is 2.2. I think it's very straightforward. Right, the second example also in Pernod equation, but now we have something called pressurized tank. So this is a pressurized tank doesn't mean that we must use a, a energy equation because this is just like a pressure. We don't have pump, you see. So we have a pressure here because why we get pressure because we have a closed tank so this cover here will 
separate the water inside the tank from the atmosphere so we can't consider this pressure as an atmospheric pressure so now we can't delete or we can't uh, assume that p1 is going to equal b2 atmospheric pressure no at all we can't do that so what we're going to do look at the answer here we will have case one and two so we're going to keep p1 which is equal 250 kilopascal we're going to keep b2 here which is like atmospheric pressure guys but uh, same as we did before this v here is going to be zero and we have velocity here so that's fine so we can we can calculate the the volumetric flow rate very easily so one we did this equation here we remove z2 only so only z2 just as you not remove it's equal zero other parameters is still there and v1 is zero so we get we get this equation just direct substitution we're gonna get the v velocity velocity is 18.7 meter over second nice i have velocity i have the meter here very easily i can calculate the volumetric flow rate or flow rate which is equal 0.147 meters cube per second this is uh, the only difference here uh, from the example that we did in in, uh, in the slide in in the notes is we have extra pressure right we have extra pressure so we must be careful about all these terms. We need to know the atmospheric pressure here. We need to know this value, etc. Right? Interesting. I hope you understand the answer. Not difficult at all. Yes, we have also a nice example here, guys. Direct application also of Pernod equation. You see, guys, here we have a fire hose with velocity of one meter per second and we got the pressure 200 kilo 200 kilo pascal so but this pressure inside the comes from the machine the fire machine at the exit here at the exit we know that the pressure will drop to be atmospheric pressure 101 kilo pascal right and we need to assume that there is no change in the height this is level uh, it's horizontal so we need to use Bernoulli equation to calculate the velocity of water exit at the nozzle here right so density the gravity all these issues so we apply Bernoulli equation we know that z h with h gun with gun you see we still have velocity here we still have velocity at the nozzle and velocity at the at the fire uh, what at the fire water tank right so we're gonna keep v1 and v2 only we just remove it uh, z or h here and it so we have this equation straightforward i have all parameters i have rho i have v1 i have b1 and i have b2 so i only need to calculate v2 which is 14 meter per second over second or per second right very simple and very direct so the concept here guys you need to understand the, the scenario read the question twice so if we have as example the nose level is higher than the fire the the, the tank with like one meter so we're gonna use here we're gonna keep h2 to be like minus one and etc so we need to be careful about all giving information okay okay another example here problem number four also mm, uh, parallel equation we have uh, here guys a fuel uh, refinery uh, ethanol etc whatever we have a flowing in the pipe of velocity one meter per second. The pressure, atmospheric pressure, 100 kilopascal. So here we need to know how much, how much the needs the ethanol to be at pressure of two atmospheric pressure. So we need to know, we need to, to pressurize this ethanol to be under pressure of two atmospheric pressure on the lower level right 
So we need to know how far much the pipe drop her in height in order to achieve this pressure. So I need to know how much I must drop in the in the elevation to maintain this pressure. Assume velocity doesn't uh, doesn't change. We can assume that v1 is going to equal v2. And density of uh, methanol is, or sorry, ethanol is 789 kilogram over meter cube and the gravity etc all this so we have this equation here we we assume v1 is going to equal v2 v1 equal v2 done gone so you see here we keep p1 b2 and draw gh and draw g. you can you see this is like a different figure of the equation you can use the regular figure it's fine so all what you need to know uh, now we just we need to know delta H. How is the difference between the two levels? So very simple, very straightforward. You need to be careful about the numbers, about the units. So we need like a drop of 13.1 meter to maintain or to keep this sky, this pressure at the bottom side, right? Problem number five here, general energy equation. You see, guys, we have water pipe and we have two diameters of, for this water pipe. The first one 15 centimeters, the second one is 8 centimeters, and there is a reducer between these two pipes. Pressure here is 480 kilopascal, pressure at the left, at the right side, 445 kilopascal. So this is the information, and we have flow rate 0.03. 5 meter cube per second and the pipe is horizontal so z1 is going to equal z2 finish so what we need to know guys okay determine determine the irreversible the, the irreversible head losses or head losses in the reducer we need we need to know head losses which is hl hl right okay so i have this equation general energy equation i write it so I look, we have bump, there is no bump. Z1 equals Z2. We have turbine, no turbine. So we're going to remove turbine, Z2, and Z1, etc. Yeah, we must keep P1, V1, P2, V2, and HL. Why? Because it's not the same velocity here, because different diameter. So velocity is going to be changed. So, so this is the equation will be like that, will be in this way, right? So First step here, we need to know velocity. So I know the flow rate, so I calculate V1, V2, number one. Finish, done. Then, now I know V1, I know V2, I know B1, B, B2, finish. So HL is going to equal 1.1 meter. So in this pipe, head loss is going to equal 1.1 meter. So how much energy needed to maintain the flow? To maintain same flow within this H losses, uh, head losses. So because we have head losses now, we need extra bump. We need extra energy to maintain the flow as it. Otherwise, we're going to have like a drop in the flow. So very simple. We use this direct equation. The energy is going to equal the vol the mass flow rate sorry uh, we we we're gonna use this equation rho v g times h l you're gonna use this equation it's mainly the mass mass uh, flow rate times g times l so how we can uh, so, so this is rho times v times g times h l 1000 flow gravity head losses you're gonna get the value 406 watt so it's about 0.4 kilowatt right right yeah this is very important example i need you to understand it very simple very straightforward right and here is the last example yeah this is very simple very typical like the last example in the in the slide i don't remember the example number but if you go back to the slide you will find this very simple example 
All what you need to know, you need to calculate the, uh, the flow rate. We have bump. This bump is 15 HB, which is like a horsepower. You, you, you will see how we can do, deal with this kind of unit. And we need to bump the water for up to 45 meter. Okay, and the efficiency of the bump 82%. Determine the maximum volume of flow rate. You need to know how much the uh, what is the maximum flow rate. We have this equation for the bump. We have the blue bump here. I'm GZ. This is the same equation as I did before here in the previous example. So now the first step to convert to get the net energy that we can get from the bump efficiency point 80, 82 times 15. So it's 12.3 horsepower. So that's what we need to get now. So we divide all this over rho GZ 1000. 9.8145 this conversion to convert one horsepower for what so we must know this is not required from you to remember to remind guys i'm gonna give you the conversion if it's needed so each one hb will equal is equal uh 745.7 watt so we do the all conversion so we, we see that we have the flow the maximum flow is equal 0.0208 meter cube per second meaning about 20 liter per second right very simple very straightforward that's all for from me now and i hope all of you enjoy this class okay guys see you later good luck